Thanks guys for that first carrier update this morning. Great to be back in studio with the both of you. It's now time now to welcome Alan Adler, Detroit Bureau Chief with our top story of the day. Alan, thanks for joining us. Let's dig right into it. What you got today? Well, it, I last Friday had an opportunity to go to United Road Services. They're uh, only a few miles from me here in the Detroit area uh, to, to talk with uh, Mark Anderson, who's the CEO. Um, now, United Road moves 4 million uh, cars a year. These are car haulers. It's the biggest one out there. Um, interesting story of what's happening there, because when you combine the COVID pandemic and the supply chain crisis. This is a business that, while it relies heavily on the uh, uh, OEM car makers, you know, for their business, it had to start looking for other things to do because as cars were not being built and were being, you know, stored in yards and things like that, uh, United Road wasn't able to keep going at its same uh, pace in terms of, you know, how it ran its business. And, you know, it's kind of funny, Mark Mark drew up a, a sort of a little triangle um, with A, B, and C on it and showed how they move vehicles, you know, from, from uh, you know, distribution, excuse me, from plants to, to uh, port to rail and then back. And it's all a really nice choreography when it's working, but when it isn't working, uh, he has to either, you know, let people go. He's got about 900 company drivers and 1,100 mostly Peterbilt trucks that uh, that they haul these uh, car haulers with. But instead of that, they decided they would go ahead and, and try to pick up business from from others that were struggling. Um, they needed to, you know, rental car companies were getting rid of their inventory. They needed somebody to haul it. So uh, the companies that were doing that sort of went away and United Road stepped in. So interesting story on these guys, what they've done to sort of battle some of the inefficiencies. These were not internal inefficiencies, but external ones. Yeah, so how are they? Uh, good morning, by the way, uh, sir. Uh, very nice to see you again this week. Um, so how did they um, how did they pivot afterwards? I mean, how, or where are they at right now? How are things coming back? Am I going to be looking for a new car soon or should I not even bother yet? <laughs> Well, it's getting it's getting a little better. Um, there's a term called uh, suggested uh, annual rate or or the seasonal adjusted annual rate SAR, which suggests that we are seeing some recovery now in the car business. Uh, went from about 12.9 million to 15 million between December and January. So the car makers are getting their mojo back. They're they're able to build in most cases. We still have some spot shutdowns where there's either semiconductor or other part shortages. But by and large, uh, Mark Anderson thinks that the car business is sort of in the trough right now, heading out. Most of the experts that watch the car space expect about a million more units a year over the next two or three years mm. to uh, enter into the capacity. So that's coming back. Um, what his goal now is, you know, keep some of this used business that they've got or remarket it, if you will, and then you know build in more of the new car business. So uh, he expects they'll do a little over four million vehicles this year. And I said, well, that sounds pretty good. He said, yeah, but you've got to count all these inefficiencies. I mean, you know, they they have three types of uh, of carriers. They've got their own. They've got uh, sort of a Landstar style, um, uh, you know, contractors. And then they also have third parties that they work with. Well, a lot of the work, because they just couldn't make the dance work properly, they've had to lay off to the third party guys. And, and in this case, you know, Anderson's paying them 120% of contract rate to move stuff just, you know, and also to manage the customer relationships that come with it. So he's had some really tough stuff to work through. Alan, I've got to think but wonder, finding a driver, the specialized driver, to haul those car, to drive those car haulers to are probably one of those problems that they're dealing with, right? Did they mention anything about kind of the tightness of that labor, finding the specialized driver too? Well, you know, they, they've done, Kaylee, they've done really well on the retention side. Um, uh, car haulers are paid better than most other drivers. Maybe flatbed in some cases might do as well. But car haulers need special skills, uh, geospatial skills, if you will, mm -hmm. to be able to figure out how to put a car onto and off of a of one of those carriers, uh, you know, how to angle it and things like that. This is a job that takes, after you have your CDL, about 10 months to learn. And so United Road pays very well, I, I would say very well, about $85,000 a year, two years ago. That number is now closer to 100,000 or even 110,000 uh, for, for a driver. So retention, um, which historically there has run around 25 to 30%, excuse me, the, the lack of retention or, or uh, quits um, is up to about 40% right now. 
um, which is not a happy thing for them. So every time they can recruit and train, they they get somebody who's probably going to stick around. But but boy, I'll tell you, it has been tough for everybody, and and Anderson and others over there are struggling with that. I bet they are. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize that they're loading and unloading those trailers themselves, and in many times in not such great conditions along the side of the road next to a dealership at times, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what, what do their routes look like? How do they, uh, are they mostly long haul? Are they pretty regular routes with uh, United Road? You mentioned that they're mostly plant to rail to, to port, right? So they're not a dealership yeah. delivery yeah. type of stuff, right? Um, well, yeah, there are some some dealer deliveries in there. I don't know. I didn't get into all of the specifics mm -hmm. of of what they're doing and how they're moving stuff. Just the the general movement of sort of that a uh, a would be say a manufacturing plant to to a port and then a port to a rail uh, and then back, you know, to to point A again. And we didn't we didn't really take that apart all the way, uh, you know. But it certainly is something that you know. It, that's the meat of their business. You know, a few years ago, back in 2019, they purchased a, a, a haul away for class eight trucks and they were moving those for a very brief time before they sold that business again um, to, to focus on the car business. And I do think though that some of the stuff they picked up, they want to try to keep with the, with the used stuff. But I, I feel like, you know, they're looking, they're feeling pretty optimistic about the future here, even as we talk freight recession. Um, I wouldn't say they're immune from it. The one place that they're really hit is in getting new trucks. They, uh, they buy about 120 or try to buy about 120 new units a year, almost all from Peterbilt. Um, but they're being way cut back on that. And uh, Anderson said, well, we'll probably get, you know, we'll miss a year basically out of three years in terms of deliveries. Uh, no need to complain about it. No reason to complain. They're just, you know, it's nothing they can do anything about. But they do have 17 of their own maintenance facilities, which certainly helps. And they work with a company we have written about before, actually in context of United Road, called Uptake out of Chicago, which is an AI business that uh, is uh, working on predictive maintenance. And so uh, they've embraced that. And so as their trade cycle stretches beyond five years, temporarily or permanently, uh, you know, they're in pretty good shape as long as they, they follow. Everybody agrees that, you know, the... Uh, but the algorithm knows better than I do when this truck is going to have a problem, and uh, so they're, they've embraced that, and they're and they're working very hard to you know keep everybody on board uh, that way. So, Alan, I'm interested if this is a uh, segment uh, or a silo in the in the uh, trucking uh, industry, trucking markets that is a little bit immune to. Uh, AV or autonomous vehicles. So the, the skill set of those drivers kind of set it back from there. Did you guys have that discussion? We didn't get into that much, but but Mark did mention electric vehicles. You know, which mm -hmm. especially in the car side, you're seeing this boom in electric cars. And uh, you know, I don't know exactly how they'll have to handle those differently, but they're expecting that to be a big part of their business. Um, a, autonomous vehicles, probably not something that he's thinking about right now. I mean, you know, it, it's still pretty much bread and butter basics over there mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of you know, you know 1,700 people, a big business there. It's all it's owned. Uh, interestingly enough by a private equity, by a Carlisle group. And, uh, you know, they'll probably most likely keep them private. There's, I did ask about, you know, the idea of going public and, and no discussions of that right now. So it's a, it's a tidy business. You know, they don't release any numbers in terms of, you know, kind of money they make or revenues or anything like that. I asked, you know, I would ask that, but uh, no, no answers there. I suspect it probably throws off a good bit of cash. I do think though, from the inefficiency standpoint, the things they've had to deal with, um, you know, that they've really had to, you know, tighten down as much as they can, just like every business. But when it comes to a freight recession, yeah, I, Michael, I think they're probably immune. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like one of those things. If you if you show up, you still need a specific skill set to load and unload that that trailer, much like a flatbed. I would see that there's segments of the flatbed industry that would be fairly immune to that type of thing. Yeah, especially if you're hauling you know 100 pound chains across the back of a uh, of yeah. a motor or something that you're that you're carrying. It's it's really the, the same kind of thing. But I thought the, the the word of the day for me is geospatial sure. because that is you know just trying try to figure out how to get these things on there and angle them properly and things like that, and then take them down the road. Uh, and then, of course, as you get off with them. I noticed it rolled off your tongue. You didn't even break a sweat. That was nice. <laughs> geospatial. I'm, I'm into it. That's my word of the day. And the word of the day is geospatial, right. Kaylee. Alan, what else are you working on for us this week when it comes to writing? 
Well, I'm getting started on uh, taking a look at, at uh, guess what, electric vehicles. But, you know, in this case, uh, you know, we're seeing a huge surge, um, uh, almost, uh, you know, much faster than people expected on on electric vans. Uh, uh, speaking with some folks around uh, about that, I think we'll have something in the next week or so there. Uh, quiet overall right now in terms of a lot of what's going on. I mean, there's little stuff of you know, to fill out the, the newsletter on Friday. I haven't really decided where we're headed yet on that, but we'll come up with something because I have to, right? I mean, you know, yeah. got to keep all those people happy that subscribe to us out there. You got to. Hey, Alan, one quick question. When you look at all those baseball cards behind you, is there one in particular where you go, yeah, I'm so glad I have that one? Yeah. <laughs> I, it's like your kids, Michael. If you can't love one, you got to love them all. I, there are some I, I do like better, but you know, I, I mean, I'm obviously I'm I'm, I'm partial to to a, a set from 1958, after she got birth year, that I've been working go. on for many years, upgrading and so forth. So we'll stick with that. Excellent stuff. Thank right, you so Alan. much, Alan. Thanks for that. Head to FreightLabs.com, search Truck Tech to subscribe to that newsletter to get it in your inbox on Friday mornings at 11 a.m.